What's up fam? It's your girl Mrs. Tony two times and I'm back with another video. In this episode of Hood Tales, I'll be taking it to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But before we get into this video, welcome if you're new here to our channel and welcome back to all of our subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so and join the Tony Two Times family. Click that notification bell to get notified on future uploads. And if you're rocking with the content, hit that like button. All right, without further delay, let's jump right into it. The start of a new relationship can be so exciting. There's nothing like that honeymoon phase when things are fresh and new. And that could be said for Ebony when she got into a new relationship with a woman named Jasmine. Ebony's new romance, however, would soon lead to her demise. Ebony Pack was born on September 26, 1990 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to her parents, Rhonda Pack and Arthur Lee Long. She was her mother's second child. Ebony graduated from Frankfurt High School in 2009, and after that, her and her family moved to a suburbs in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, about an hour northwest of Philadelphia. Ebony, who was called Eb or Ebby, lived her life with no regrets, according to her mother, Rhonda. After high school, Ebony went on to attend nursing school. Ebony had a goal and wouldn't let anything stop her from achieving it. So when she became pregnant, she changed direction and got her nursing assistant certification instead. That allowed her more time to spend with her daughter, Ava. It wasn't easy for Ebony attending school while also caring for her daughter, but Ebony made it work. Staying focused on her plan, Ebony went back to school and became an LPN, a career she loved. Ebony got a great job at Powerback, a physical rehabilitation center. She was known as a friendly, compassionate nurse who took care of her patients with love and dedication. She was right on the front lines in 2020 during one of the nation's most trying times. Despite her obstacles, Ebony's sights on her future were bright. Her next goals were to launch her own healthcare business and go back to school to become a registered nurse. Her business was already registered with the city of Philadelphia under the name Best Living Home Care LLC. Since other relatives in her family were also in the nursing field, Ebony saw this as an opportunity for them to build a family business. It would have been her two greatest passions coming together, her family and her love of helping others. Her business was expected to open in 2020, but because of the events of that year, those plans had to be put on hold temporarily. Ebony was described as the kind of person who always kept a level head and was always optimistic even in the face of adversity. Anyone who came across Ebony would be drawn to her happy and bright energy. She was fun and loved to dance and sing, especially gospel music. Ebony's calm, kind, and generous demeanor allowed her to be the peacemaker in her family who they would go to for answers about life's issues. By 2020, Ebony was a mother of two daughters, ages 10 and 6 years old. And by then, she had also found a new love, her girlfriend, Jasmine. The couple started dating in July 2020. Jasmine had just gotten out of a relationship with her ex-boyfriend, 50-year-old Chong Ling Dan. According to reports, Jasmine and Chong had a tumultuous relationship. Jasmine accused Chong of being verbally and physically abusive during and after their relationship, which ended in July 2020. Chong wasn't ready to let Jasmine go and wanted her back. 
Chung also wanted Jasmine to return $19,000 she had been holding for him. Jasmine, however, only returned $10,000, having spent the rest. Chung was furious and confronted Jasmine at a gas station and told her he was going to fix her. He made similar threats towards Ebony. Jasmine eventually got a protective order against Chong. Despite Jasmine's issues with Chong, Jasmine and Ebony moved forward in their budding relationship. Meanwhile, Chong's alleged jealousy and rage towards his ex's new relationship would fester into something more sinister. On the night of November 28, 2020, Ebony left home and was on her way to Jasmine's place. Just minutes away from arriving, she got to a red light at the intersection of East Hancock Street and Church Road in Lansdale, a suburb of Philadelphia. A dark colored Cadillac with counterfeit paper registration tags pulled up next to her. Suddenly, multiple shots were fired into Ebony's Nissan Sentra. The Cadillac drove off and Ebony's car rode through the intersection, hitting a light pole. Police were dispatched to the intersection for a report of a vehicle accident with shots fired at 9.59 p.m. Upon arrival, police found Ebony's car that was still running and was riddled with bullets to the driver's side door. Ebony was slumped over the front console and had sustained multiple wounds, including to the chest and one to the leg. She was rushed to the hospital, where she was pronounced gone an hour later. Ebony's family and all who knew her were stunned and absolutely devastated by her slain. Why would this happen to Ebony? Following the tragic incident, a joint investigation was launched by local law enforcement agencies. Investigators pulled surveillance footage from a nearby building. The footage showed the entire incident. A total of 10 fired 9mm casings were found at the scene. Investigators learned that Ebony would travel the same route every evening from her place to Jasmine's place in Lansdale on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. On the night of the shooting, Ebony went through one exit at 9.27 p.m. and then exited another on 9.42 p.m. Investigators said that at both locations, Ebony was being tailed by a dark-colored Cadillac, the same vehicle captured on surveillance at the intersection of the incident. Police worked to identify who the owner of the vehicle was and its whereabouts. There was a $10,000 reward out for any information in connection to Ebony's slaying. Ebony's girlfriend Jasmine talked to investigators. She told detectives about her relationship with Ebony and her volatile breakup with Chong. She told them that her and Ebony started dating the same month she had broken up with Chong. Jasmine also told police that Chong referred to Ebony by derogatory terms and that he was aware of the type of vehicle that Ebony drove. Jasmine told detectives about Chong's bitterness about their breakup and about the money situation between the two of them. She also mentioned his threats and the protective order. Despite Jasmine hearing Chong make statements like, I'm going to fix her or I have something for her in relation to Ebony, Jasmine told police she didn't believe that the threats were directed toward Ebony. That information gave investigators an insight on who may have wanted Ebony gone. Although investigators had reason to believe Chong may have been involved, it took some time for detectives to crack the case. Police would finally get their break when they were able to determine that the Cadillac scene in the surveillance footage belonged to 52-year-old Ricky Vance of Philadelphia. Testing done on the car showed particles that would represent gunshot residue on the passenger side of the Cadillac, 
which was consistent with the footage from the incident. Detectives also found out that Ricky was a friend of Chung Ling Dan. There was then a third man linked to the incident, 48-year-old Terrence March. Terrence was a mutual friend of Chung and Ricky. Cell phone records showed that all three men traveled from different directions to an area in Philadelphia just after 7.50 p.m. on the evening of Ebony Slain. The location was significant due to the fact that it was in the vicinity of a residence of Chung's new girlfriend at the time. Cell phone records also revealed that Ricky and Terrence were together at another residence in Philadelphia prior to the incident and then all cell phone activity stopped. And then after the incident, their cell phone activity resumed. The men then met back up at Ricky's place in Philly. And then after that, Terrence returned to his home 30 minutes away in King of Prussia. According to court records, Terrence was identified by investigators as the person responsible for obtaining the counterfeit registration tags for Ricky's Cadillac. Investigators claimed that Ricky was the driver and believed Terrence was the trigger man firing from the passenger seat of the Cadillac. With all the circumstantial evidence, police were ready to make the arrest. Ricky Vance was the first to be arrested. He was arraigned in April 2021 on charges of first and third degree hit, possession of a firearm, and conspiracy in connection to the incident. After the announcement of Ricky's arrest, Terrence was reportedly driven to the Philadelphia International Airport by his fiance for a flight to Honduras where he was going to meet with a man believed to be Chung Ling Dan. It's not clear how long Chung had already been in Honduras before Terrence arrived. While Terrence was in Honduras, he spoke to his fiance on a regular basis, but all communication ceased abruptly in mid-May 2021, according to court documents. Investigators said Chung told Terrence's fiance that Terrence had gone missing in Honduras. An arrest warrant for Terrence was put out in August 2021. Chung would later return to the US, but Terrence did not. After a lengthy investigation, police had compiled enough evidence to determine that Chung Ling Dan was the mastermind behind a well-planned and orchestrated plot to end Ebony Pack's life. In December 2021, Chung was arrested and charged with first-degree hit, conspiracy to commit a hit, and other related offenses. In September 2022, Chung Ling Dan, 52, and Ricky Vance, 54, went to trial. Prosecutors claim Chung hired Ricky and Terrence to end Ebony's life. Both Chung and Ricky vehemently denied any involvement. Ricky's lawyer said his client never left his house on the night of the incident and said Ricky let Terrence use his car that evening. Ricky claimed Terrence seemed to not be acting right when he came back to return it. Ricky also denied having any contact with Chung before, during, or after the incident. Chung's attorney said there was no direct evidence that Chung orchestrated the slaying. Chung said he didn't know Ricky. He also claimed Jasmine had changed her story to police multiple times since Ebony's passing. Chung's attorney questioned why Chung would want to do something to Ebony, someone he didn't know. If he was mad at Jasmine, why take Ebony's life? But according to prosecutors, Ebony was collateral damage in Chung's revenge plot against his ex-girlfriend, Jasmine. Reports say the slaying was to punish Jasmine for her disrespect and to send a message for spending $9,000 of Chung's money after the breakup. On September 26, 2022, 
on what would have been Ebony's 32nd birthday. Both Chung Ling Dan and Ricky Vance were convicted by a jury of seven men and five women. Chung and Ricky showed no outward reaction as the guilty verdict was read. Weeks later, both men were sentenced to life in prison. Chung sat emotionless during his sentencing. Ebony's mother called Chung a monster and the worst kind of evil. Chung simply stared at her the entire time. As for the third alleged accomplice, Terrence March, he is still facing charges and continues to be sought after by authorities. His last known whereabouts are in Honduras, where Chung claims he went missing. Terrence March is innocent until proven guilty. May Ebony Pack continue to rest in peace. My heart and deepest condolences to her family and her children. Ebony seemed to be a beautiful person on the inside and out. It's unfortunate she got into a relationship with someone who had the kind of baggage that spilled over onto her that resulted in her losing her life. I don't think Ebony knew that her life was in jeopardy. She had so much going for her. She had a successful career and on her way to starting a family business. All of it to be cut short over something she had nothing to do with. I'm so baffled as to why Chung orchestrated this life-taking plot against her. Ebony and his ex were only dating for a short period of time, not even six months. Not wishing that anything bad happened to Jasmine, but why did Chung not go after Jasmine instead? She admitted to spending the money. She's the one who ended their relationship. Jasmine was the person he had history with. What did Ebony have to do with it? Why a whole hit for hire plot against her just to get back at his ex? Chung had reportedly been in a new relationship, so why not just move on? I guess he was really that furious at the whole situation. Maybe his jealousy overcame him. Maybe it was his burning desire for revenge and retribution that led him to hire two friends to take an innocent person's life just to make a point. It's just all so crazy. And what happened to the third guy, the alleged trigger man? Is he really missing in Honduras? Why did Chung flee to Honduras if, according to him, he had nothing to do with it? And why did Terrence follow and now he's missing? There are still so many unanswered questions that may never come to light. Fam, tell me your thoughts on this tragic story in the comments below. Alright fam, that's it for this episode of Hood Tales. Thank you all so much for watching and making it to the end of this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This is your girl, Mrs. Tony, two times, and I'm out. Mm -hmm.